بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم سید عاقف شاہ لیکچرر انسٹیٹیوٹ آف بزنس اسٹڈیز کوہاٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی دا ٹائٹل آف دس کورس از بزنس فائنانس اینڈ دا کورس کور آف دس سبجیکٹ از ایم ایس ون ہنڈریڈ ففٹی ون دس از اوور سیکنڈ ریکارڈیڈ لیکچر اینڈ دا ٹاپک فار ٹو ڈیز ڈسکشن از time value of money outline of this lecture comprises of future value of money present value of money and double your money that is rule of 72 which we will discuss shortly so dear students after listening to this lecture you should be able to understand the two basic learning outcomes Number first, understand what is meant by time value of money. And number two, understand how to solve present and future value numerical cases. So before starting this lecture, let us recall that what we have discussed in our previous lecture regarding the time value of money. So dear student, we have discussed simple interest rate and compound interest rate and then we have solved few numerical cases to understand the basic idea of present and future value in this lecture we will discuss in detail how to solve present and future value numerical cases so let us take an example that we are discussing future value with a single deposit in a graphical way the case explains that assume that you deposit $1000 at a compound interest rate of 7% for 2 years and the question is asking you to calculate the future value after 2 years so we can draw a timeline which starts with time 0 which depicts that it is our today's time and we are going to deposit our $1000 into this investment opportunity at the rate of 7% compound interest rate by compounding we mean that which has already been explained in our previous lecture but let's recall that the compounding interest rate means that after earning 7% interest on our initial deposit at the completion of first year it will accumulate certain amount by the end of first year and now again the 7% will be applied on our this accumulated balance which will be 1070 by the end of first year so we are required to calculate the future value of this deposit at the end of second year let's see in the next slide how do we do that so the formula for calculating the future value of any given sum is equal to p not which depict our current or initial deposit multiply by 1 plus i raised to the power 1 if that is supposed to be accumulated for one year So the future value at the end of first year is equal to p not now what is p not p not is our initial deposit which we are going to deposit in that particular investment opportunity which will be compounded by 7% interest rate i denote interest rate so we are going to plug our given data in the previous slide which was 1 thousand dollar our initial deposit and 7% compound interest rate into this formula we come up with 1070 dollars future value by the end of first year now what is compound interest you have earned 70 dollar interest on your 1000 deposit over the first year but we are required to calculate the future value at the end of second year so let's see in the next slide what is our next step 
In the next step, you can see that this arrow is depicting us that we have to accumulate this initial deposit by two years. So therefore, stepwise, we can look that our initial deposit was same $1,000 and we need to multiply this amount by 1.07 which is our compound interest rate multiplicative factor which has been calculated by plugging in the given data which is 1 plus i, i is 7 percent raised to the power 1. So 1 and 1 is the power on these bracket values. In order to remove the redundancy in mathematics we got another formula that if the bases are same we need to multiply we need to give a square to this base if this has been written one more time that is 1 plus i then we can simply plug 3 over here so our initial deposit was $1000 and we need to calculate the future value at the compound interest rate of 7% so the final ultimate formula with us to calculate the future value is P0 multiply by 1 plus i raised to the power 2. So after plugging the given data in our numerical case, we come up with the future value of 1144.90. Now we have realized and seen that the compounding interest rate formula gives us an additional $4.9. What is the reason behind this? That initially we have calculated the interest rate on our initial deposit but for the second time period we are going to apply 7% interest on our previously accumulated sum. So this is the reason that after applying 7% interest rate on our first year ended accumulated amount, we come up with the additional $4.90 of interest earned in the second year, which is compounded over simple interest. So dear student, normally we have two mechanism or two methods to calculate future value. One method is known as formula method and the second one is known as table method which we will discuss shortly. So the final formula in given case was future value base 2 depict that we are going to calculate the future value by the end of second year. P0 was representing our current initial investment which could be uh, elaborated as our present value 1 plus i was the multiplicative factor raised to the power 2 means after two years of time period we were supposed to calculate the future value so the journal formula for future value calculation looks like in this fashion that future value base n n represents that number of time period or number of years you want to accumulate your present amount and want to calculate the future value. For example, after the end of fifth year, we were supposed to calculate the future value. So we are required to write 5 instead of n. P0 depicts your initial deposit or the present amount. 1 plus i, same as previously explained. Raised to the power n represents the number of years you want to accumulate your present value. If you want to calculate your present value for 5 years, so it takes normally 5 jumps on your previously accumulated balance at time at the end of first year, second year, third year, fourth year and fifth year. Another way around, we can also calculate future value with the help of future value interest factor table which we will discuss in the coming slides. 
Dear student, by taking the same example and same numerical data, we can use the factor table to calculate the future value of our present amount. So let's go back once again and see what was the numerical case. So numerical case was assume that you deposit $1,000 at a compound interest rate of 7% for two years. And now you are required to calculate future value at the end of second year by using table method. Let's move ahead. The data has been refreshed in our mind. So in order to use the table method, the formula for calculating the future value is this last one. Future value base n is equal to our present value or initial deposit multiply by this future value interest factor base interest into n. Now we will discuss that how we are going to see this table 1. Dear student, if you open fundamentals of financial management by Van Horn and go back to the appendices, you can see this table with name of future value interest factor and the label to that table will be table number one. So you can find out from any financial management book at the end of any book you can find out these tables. Another way around you can also find out this table by simply writing future value interest factor table in Google search out our web and you will find the table for it. In this slide, we have taken partial part of that table, which is future value interest factor table. So what we are going to do is, we know our data that I was 7% in our previous case, and the number of years we were going to compound our present value was two. So this is a partial future value interest factor table because we can get our required answer from this table. In this table, the first line, horizontal line, you need to find out the question provided percentage, the given percentage in the question. So the question data was explaining that we are going to get 7% compound interest rate so we need to, this is table starts with 1%, 2%, 6 3%, 4 5 6 so on and so forth. So we need to find out our relevant column, which is 7%. And then we need to find out this n number of years. This line depicts the number of years time period starting with 1 year, 2 year, 3 year, 4 year, 5 years, so on and so forth. So the given data was asking us to calculate future value at the end of second year. So we need to look in the second year line. So now at 7% compound interest rate and two number of time periods, we need to pick our relevant interest factor table from this future value interest factor table, which is one point 145. Now we need to pick out this amount or this value from this table and plug it simply in our previous slide in this formula. So let's see in our next slide how do we do that. Again the mechanism is same. We were supposed to calculate future value at the end of second year. Our initial deposit was $1,000 future value interest factor was 7% at 2 years. The factor was 1.145 which has already been written underneath for just reference purposes. After simple mathematical calculation you need to multiply this 1000 of your initial deposit with 1.145 and you get the answer that is 1100 $45. Now the difference between this value and the previously calculated formula 
value is due to the rounding factor because we have rounded these calculated numerics up to three decimal places and this is the main reason that a slight deviation in the answer of future value calculated with the help of this table and as well as with the help of formula will give you a slight deviation in the answer in our previous case when we were using the formula the answer was 1144.9 however by using this tab tabulated method we get almost similar answer so this is the method how you can calculate future value if the data is given to you. Now dear student, let's take another example. Julie Miller wants to know how large her deposit of 10,000 today will become at a compound annual interest rate of 10% for five years. In order to solve the numerical cases, you need to analyze the situation and find out your required data. Now this question is asking you that how large her deposit of today will become in future, right? N over here is 5. Compound annual interest rate is 10%. So first step is to draw a timeline. Zero depicts your initial deposit which is $10,000. You are going to invest in some depository institution and it is offering you 10% compound interest rate. Now this sum will jump to an additional 10% interest rate by the end of first year and then this accumulated amount will take another jump by 10% which is the compound interest rate needs to be applied on this new accumulated amount. And then once again, this accumulated balance will be multiplied by 10% interest rate, so on and so forth. It will take five jumps and will give you a future value by the end of fifth year. With the help of formula, we know that future value base n is equal to P0 multiply by 1 plus i raised to the power n. Now we know our data which is $10,000 multiply by 1 plus this 10%. Why? Because in order to remove this 10% we need to divide it by 100 and this value will come over here. In our next steps, this is after simple mathematical calculation we need to 1 plus 0 0.10 which is 1.10 raised to the power 5 so first of all we need to calculate this expression and after getting the answer you need to multiply it with 10,000 and our final answer is 16,105.1 dollars so if you have invested in this situation that is $10,000 at the rate of 10% compound interest rate for 5 years so after 5 years your $10,000 will become how much sixteen thousand one hundred and five dollars in a similar way we can also use our tabulated method formula is future value base 5 is equal to our present value multiply by future value interest factor which is 10 percent and five years so you need to find out this factor in our table which is given in table 1 at the end of this book that is fundamental of financial management by Van Horn. You can find this factor later on after multiplying it with your initial deposit our future value becomes 16,110. Now you can see that the formula is giving you one value future value and the tabulated method is giving you another value. The reason I already told you that this is because of the rounding values available in our future value interest factor tables. Now let's see that another rule which we have explained in our outline. A new case is presented to you that how could you double your money or how many years actually you, are, you need to double your amount. 
when you are going to invest in a particular bank account or any other depository institution. So the case explained that how long does it take to double $5,000 at a compound rate of 12% per year. This is our initial deposit P0 as we know very well 12% is a compound annual interest rate and this question is asking you to find out N. So the simple method to calculate or find out the number of years required to double this amount which is 5000 needs to be double means we need $10,000 by the end of certain number of years and we want to know that how many years are required to double this amount. So we'll use rule number 72. It is a very simple rule and a simple mechanism. The formula to find out the approximate number of years required to double this amount is you need to divide 72 by given compound interest rate which is 12% in our case. So 72 divided by I percent will give you the approximate number of years required to double your amount. So in our case 72 divided by 12 will give, will give you the 6 years approximate answer. So in this case we will be required to wait for 6 years to get this amount double that is $10,000. However the actual time required in this case is 6.12 years and how we get this answer we'll see in the next slide. In order to get the exact answer or the exact time period required to double your amount, you need a financial calculator or a computer. You need to put the given data into this financial calculator that is N is unknown, we want to know it. I denotes interest rate, compound interest rate and Y denotes yield. Interest rate or yield rate is same in this case. Present value that you want to invest in a particular bank account was or is in this case is $1000 and you want to double this amount. So you need to inject or uh, insert this data 12% $1000 future value is $2000 and PMT denotes uh, annuity payment which we will discuss in our next lectures or upcoming lectures. So after inserting data, simply press equal or enter button and you will get this mathematically calculated answer which is 6.12 years. This result indicates that $1000 investment that earns 20% annually will double to 2000 in 6.12 years which was approximately near to our rule number 72, rule of 72. So if you don't have any financial calculator, you can use this rule 72 in order to know the nearby approximate answer that how many years are required to double this amount was 6 years. So dear student, after knowing and understanding how to calculate future value in the given case, now, now we are moving towards the calculation of present value numerical cases. The case explains that assume that you need $1000 in 2 years. Let's examine the process to determine how much you need to deposit today at a discount rate of 7% compounded annually. Now our given case is explaining that or asking us that you get $1,000 in two years, like from present time, which is time zero. After this time, that is the, the completion of two years, you are going to get $1,000. And this case is asking you that how much you need to deposit in this bank account or any depository institute so that it accumulate by 7% compounding annual interest rate. And after the end of two years, you get your $1,000. So actually at the end of second year, you are required to have $1,000 
and you want to invest certain amount of money at time zero that is present and the bank is offering you 7% interest rate and it will automatic, automatically uh, accumulate to $1,000. So you want to know that how much amount you are required to put into this bank account. So the mechanism is same. You need to understand and learn your initial formula which was future value and the formula was future value is equal to present value into 1 plus i raised to the power n. So you need to rearrange this formula and your, you get your present value formula by rearranging your future value formula. So by rearranging you get present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus i raised to the power 2 because the data is explaining that at the rate of 7% compound interest rate you will get $1000 after 2 years. So you are required to calculate the present value. It means that you are going to discount this value at time 0. So the formula for calculating present value is this that the present value is equal to future value divided by this letter denotes divided by 1 plus i raised to the power 2. So after plugging the given data you get your answer which is 873.44. So it means that you are required to deposit 873.44 dollar in the bank account and after 2 years you are going to get $1,000. As in the future value calculation case, in the present value calculation scenario, we can calculate with the help of formula as well as with the help of table method. In this table method, you are again going to see at the end of the book table 2 and it will be labeled as present value interest factor table. And the general formula for calculating present value is equal to future value base n whole divided by 1 plus i raised to the power n where i denotes interest rate and n denotes number of years you are going to invest your money. This is the present value interest factor table. In our previous case, they accumulated the compound rate was 7% and the number of time period required or given were two years. So you are going to find out your required present value interest factor which is 0.873 in our case. Now this factor is going to be injected in this formula written at the end of this slide, bottom of this slide, the next slide. So by using table method you can also calculate present value the future value was $1,000 after 2 years and the present value interest factor at 7% and 2 years as per this table is 0.873. You are going to put this factor into this these small brackets and after simple mathematics multiplication you get your present value which is 873. In the previous formula case once again the answer was 873.44 and here by using the table method the answer is 873 which is almost same a slight difference is because of the rounding because we have rounded these values in the given table up to three decimal places we are going to take another story problem to calculate present value that is Julie Miller wants to know how large of deposit to make so that the money will grow to $10,000 in 5 years at a discount rate of 10%. Here the compound interest rate that is discount rate is 10% and you want to accumulate your amount to $10,000 by the end of 5th year. 0 denotes you are currently in this position and a bank offers you to put certain amount of dollars into it and it will give you 10% compound interest rate and will ultimately result to $10,000 by the end of 5th year. So the question asks you to find out the present value. So we can calculate with the help of formula 
as well as with the help of present value interest factor table. So by using the formula, you need to plug in the given data in our numerical case, which is $10,000 our future value. 10% was the discount rate, 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 5 because number of time period in this case was 5 years. The present value with the help of formula is 6,209. It means that you are required to deposit $6,902 today and it will be accumulated to $10,000 in future. So our answer is $6,000. Similarly, we can use the table method. Formula for calculating present value is equal to future value multiplied by present value interest factor 10% and 5 years. So once again, we are going to the present value interest factor and we are required to find out 10% column and 5% sorry 5 years row and it will give you a particular factor and the factor in that table is 0 0.621. And after multiplying these two values, we come up with the answer 6,210. By comparing these two answers, we have realized that every time slight deviation or difference is coming because of the rounding reason in our present value interest factor table. But however, both answers are correct. So today we have discussed in detail how to solve present and future value numerical cases. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture. If you have any question regarding present and future value numerical cases calculation, then feel free to paste post your feel free to post your queries on KCMS and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much once again. Good luck for the day. Allah Hafiz.